It's actually true, I have stopped using Cura, but let me explain why. I've been using Cura for the last five years mostly, and of course I have been looking into other alternatives like Slicer, Simplify 3D and others, but I never felt the ultimate urge to switch. However, I had a few painful experiences with Cura, especially when upgrading from one version to the next version, and that's what got me thinking. At least three times during the last years, I lost all of my custom printer and filament profiles because Cura tricked me into resetting my settings after an upgrade. I fell into clicking that trappy button and lost everything every single time. I had some backups, but old profiles sometimes don't import properly into new versions and I mostly had to start all over. Then finally, after upgrading to the latest Cura version a few months back, it happened to be again. Configuration errors. Your configuration seems to be corrupt and then you kind of tempted to fix the problem by touching this button, but that's gonna delete everything. Reset will remove all your current printers and profiles. And the thing is, these profiles are perfectly fine. They are just from a previous version and it cannot be that these cannot be imported into the next version. I don't understand why this is still not fixed. In the meanwhile, since I got my first Prusa printer, the Prusa Mini, I started using Prusa Slicer and I was actually pretty happy with it. I realized pretty soon that I could also use it with my other existing printers like the Anit A8 and the Ender series, so I started creating custom profiles for those printers in Prusa Slicer. Then came the day when I had to switch computers and I was fearing to lose all of my profiles again because I was not trusting Prusa Slicer yet to do this transfer of profiles correctly. But I was wrong. I used the export config bundle with physical printers function to get my current printers, custom profiles, and even octoprint connection settings into one single configuration file. Then I moved that over to the new PC and literally in under a minute of time, I was up and running again with Prusa Slicer on the new computer with all my settings and all my octoprint settings done. That was such an eye-opening thing that I decided to stay with Prusa Slicer and never looked back since then. I was also happily surprised that Bamboo Lab didn't do what almost every other printer manufacturer did before them, which would have been to clone Cura. Instead, they decided to clone Prusa Slicer and also made that adapted version open source now. Besides that, during the last couple of months using Prusa Slicer, there was some pretty exciting new features added to the software. Like for example, pressure equalizer to compensate Bowden compression issues. The new Arachne engine, which improves improves print quality and print speed quite a lot. Step file import, a huge game changer. And many more updates and changes mentioned in the videos that I've linked in the video description for you. So I think going back to Cura is not something I'm considering in the foreseeable future. However, I'm not saying that I will never go back. My biggest learning here is that just because mostly everyone is using the same tool for a certain job, like in this case Cura, it's so worth it looking into alternatives because we sometimes get so hung up in our existing ecosystem and mindset and we think we invested so much into learning something that it's just a waste of time to learn something else. And I think we should always challenge status quo and be on the lookout and just be curious. I have a question to you watching this video. What slicer software are you using and what was the most painful thing that you experienced using this slicer software? Let me know down in the comment section and while you're doing this I need to go and stack up some wood. 